Horace's stoicism, his adherence to the basic stoic mantle, uh, comes out in a lot of his poems, particularly a lot of the shorter ones. But the, uh, the, the perspective that he offers it is not so dogmatic, um, always infused with the kind of uh, proto-humanism that we look to Horace for. Uh, he's always just the agreeable, occasionally irascible, but uh, the approachable Roman. He, uh, he's not setting himself up to be anything particularly grand, and that has a appealing humility uh, and, uh, and, and a good sense of fun. And you can see this in uh, uh, Ode uh, 125. The young bloods are not so eager now to rattle your closed doors with volleys of pebbles and disturb your sleep. The door that once moved so very easily on its hinges now hugs the threshold. Less and less often do you hear the cry, I'm yours and dying for your love, Lydia. Night after long night, and you lie there sleeping. Your turn will come when you are an old rag in some lonely alleyway, weeping at the insolence of lovers as the wind from Thrace holds wilder and wilder orgies between the old moon and the new, and your burning love, the lust that drives the mothers of horses to madness, rages around your ulcerous liver. There will be no shortage of complaints about cheerful youngsters who take more pleasure in green ivy and dark myrtle and dedicate dry leaves to the east wind. Winter's crony. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's funny. This is, uh, this is stoicism. This is the, uh, the, the perspective of not getting too worked up about stuff, taking it all in stride. That aspect of stoicism was very much in Horace's wheelhouse. Uh, you see uh, with it a kind of his, his reflective, uh, let's say, habit of uh, ease and comfort. He liked his comfort. He liked being, uh, he liked taking it easy. Uh, he, he was not one to get particularly worked up about stuff. Um, and so he is, uh, he is looking at the, the benefits of aging, if you will, where, all right, you know, you're, you're not the young buck anymore. You're not the, uh, you're not the, uh, the wild, passionate youth that maybe you once were, uh, he's, uh, he's recognizing that. He's not necessarily condemning it. Uh, there's nothing particularly moralistic about this. Uh, and you can see how this might even rub, uh, uh, Augustine the wrong way, but the, um, Augustus the wrong way, but you can see, uh, the recognition of the irrational, um, and even a little acceptance of it. Uh, the acceptance of the sex drives, acceptance of the passions. Uh, it is human. Uh, nothing human is outside of me. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, the admittance that young love must have its day, that passion will rule the young. But over time, that gets balanced out and you see the balance coming in from stoicism the idea that the the passions will wane over time if somebody ages they get a little bit less uh, caught up they get a little bit less passionate for good or for ill they get less uh, virile certainly that is sort of the uh, implication of that quotation but the uh, but also they become less uh, less riotous, they become less disturbed. They start to have a little bit more fun in their life because they're not so uh, caught up in wild fun. They begin to enjoy a certain ease. Um, there will be no shortage of complaints about cheerful youngsters who take more pleasure in green ivy and dark myrtle and de dedicate dry leaves to the east wind winter's crony. Uh, no shortage of complaints. Uh, he's admitting that, well, yeah, sure. Uh, as I get older, I'm going to be griping an awful lot. I'm going to be complaining about 
kids today. Uh, that's sort of fun. That's sort of funny. But it doesn't necessarily mean that he's condemning it. He's just seeing it as part of a natural cycle. That when, maybe when he was young, he was the passionate one. He was the excitable one. He was the one out there, you know, going fast and breaking things. But now he's on the back side of that. And now he's saying, well, okay, now I just really want a comfortable chair and a good night's sleep. Um, and I'll be complaining about all the noisy stuff. I'll be complaining about, oh, kids today, they're just awful. But it's all part of nature. And that final image, those two final images about uh, more pleasure in green ivy and dark myrtle, um, green, youthful, uh, vibrant, uh, fertile, uh, versus dry leaves. He's perhaps reflecting on his own age and saying dry leaves, uh, where the life is pretty much bled out of you. Uh, those are both parts of nature. And he is making a little pitch in this poem, I would say, advocating for nature, for nature as a force in which to collapse into. <laughs> 